dwell together in unity. We welcome those on live stream too. We always give thanks for you and the opportunity we have to be with you. We're continuing in the Gospel of John tonight. This will be our 17th exposition. We'll be in the first chapter, verses 47 through 49. <clears throat> A spiritual life and everything that it entails, perception and insight, sensitivity, it all commences when you confront Christ. It doesn't begin with church affiliation. Oh, but I want to be clear about this. Mannerly but clear. It doesn't begin with friendship. You got to know this. There may be some preparatory work and spade work, I understand, but God begins to work when someone confronts Christ. And it doesn't start significantly until then. Now, the people we're reading about in John that confront Christ, they were godly people godly people. They were interested people. Now, now this will revolutionize the way you think if you can see what I'm talking about here. A lot of people spend an awful lot of time talking to disinterested people and that extended conversation like that is questionable. Now you got to work it out. I'm not going to work it out for you. I've worked it out for me but you got to work it out for you. Don't Waste your time. Yeah. Amen. Jesus didn't. Check it out. Yeah. Check it out. See who he spent time with. Yeah. See who he left. See who he sent away. Mm -hmm. See who he told to stay. See who he talked to. See who he opened up things to. It'll be plain enough. It's yeah. all there. Now, these people that we're talking about now in John, they were disciples of John the Baptist. But none of the conditions that happened when they confronted Jesus happened when they confronted John. There's a reason for this. There's spiritual life and all of its entailments, which include faith and hope and this sort of thing, None of them can pass from one person to another. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. You got to see this. Uh -huh. If it could, we'd be yeah. <laughs> we'd be passing it around. Let me tell you, it can't pass. Your virtue can't pass to me. My insight can't pass to you. You could be around John the Baptist, but what John the Baptist had wouldn't come wouldn't come to you. If you got it, you'd have to get it from the Lord that gave it to John the Baptist. Yeah, yeah. Right. Peter the Apostle, Paul the Apostle, they couldn't actually pass or communicate spiritual life. Yeah, that's right. There's only one person that can communicate spiritual life, yeah, amen. and that's Christ Jesus. Nobody else can, they can't communicate it. Moses' face shined, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but nobody's face shined that saw his face shine. That's right. yeah. The glory didn't rub off on anybody else so that everybody else started glowing. Oh, no, no, yeah. it couldn't happen. Couldn't happen that way. Not even Aaron. It didn't even rub off on Aaron or Joshua, yeah. mm -hmm. both of whom were godly. No legitimate prophet became so because he was around another prophet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, what about Elisha? Well, God's, God gave Elisha twice as much. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Elijah couldn't pass anything to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. God gave it to him. Now we're seeing people being brought to Jesus. Mm -hmm. The only Jesus can give life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing to have that in your creed, you know. <laughs> But you, what you live with that in mind, it makes a big difference Amen. how you attempt to influence people. 
makes a big difference. Your job is to get them to Christ. Your job is it to make things happen. Once you realize this, now it revolutionizes what you do because Jesus is alive. And Jesus is working. And Jesus is available to anyone who draws nigh and wants to come to him. So we're, see we're seeing this lived out here. Philip it brought Andrew. Now Andrew, he's bringing, or Philip's bringing Nathaniel. Andrew brought Peter. Now Philip's bringing somebody. See, but they're bringing them to Christ. They're not trying to transform them themselves. Jesus said, now the words I speak are spirit and they are life. The words you speak aren't spirit and life. That's right. If they have any effect, it's because Jesus empowered them. Amen. His words are spirit. That's why it's important to speak His words. Mm -hmm. yes. His words are spirit and life, and He's the one that that gives them that. Yeah. Now, Peter and Andrew, they didn't leave their fishing trade for John the Baptist. Yeah. Right. I would like to note. James and John, they didn't leave their fishing business for John the Baptist either. And Matthew the publican, he didn't leave the tax table for anybody but Jesus. And the people you know, that's the only reason they'll leave. They aren't going to leave anything because of you. If they do, it won't last. It'll fizzle out. It'll fizzle out. Believe I'm telling you the truth. So the thing is to get them to Jesus, these people seem to sense it. Saul of Tarsus, he didn't give up persecuting the church for anybody else. He met a lot of Christians, huh? He could send it to, he was hunting them out. He was hunting them down. But when he found them, no virtue passed from them to him. Did it? No. But when he met Christ, ah, that was another, <laughs> that was another matter. Praise the Lord. Now, this is something that's, it's got to be apprehended. Nobody can make you apprehend it. We can just tell you, you need to apprehend it. That nothing really changes until it comes in contact with Christ. Cleavus and his partner, they were down and they were, they were faithful people. They'd been with Jesus for three years. These weren't run-of-the-mill Jews. Well, they were really... Uh, down in the dump, so to speak, until uh, they met Jesus. And in Jesus, he would, he turned up that the disciples were hiding away, you know, lamenting until Jesus showed up. See, I'm showing you that what that with Jesus, he's the one that makes the makes the difference. <clears throat> All right, now this is G, we're going to see him speaking to Nathaniel tonight. John 1, 47 through 49. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him. Uh, don't miss that now. Don't miss that. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Mm -hmm. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Amen. See how that, see how just the one, one little confrontation, look at what happened already to Nathanael. Now Jesus it says, John 1, says, Jesus found Philip. Mm -hmm. Now Philip finds Nathaniel. <laughs> That's the man of the kingdom. Those who are found by Jesus find themselves bringing others to Jesus. That's just, it's the way it works. Now you can open a school if you want, try and teach people how to do that, and a lot of people have done just that. And it hasn't made any kind of measurable impact on the Christian community or any place else. 
We still got a whole bunch of people that don't know the Lord and a whole bunch of countries that haven't been evangelized. All those conditions exist in spite of all these programs, all these schools, all these patterns of thought. Why? <clears throat> well, I'm going to wax bold. It's because Jesus isn't in them. Jesus is not unproductive. Never think he is. If there's a lack of productivity, Jesus isn't in the house. That's what the problem is. The problem is that we haven't done enough, we're not organized enough, we didn't try hard enough. That's not the problem. People are not, Jesus is either he isn't there or he's about to leave because nobody's paid him any attention. To bring someone with you, view, see that's a that's a religious marketing ploy. That's what that is. Bring someone with you, bring two people with you. If everybody brings one, we'll have, you know. That's a religious marketing ploy. Nobody who really met Jesus ever had to be told to do that. I mean, search and see. If I'm not telling the truth, just speak up. People come in contact with Jesus don't have to be told. It's just the people that haven't that have to be told it. And, of course, it won't work. Because Jesus won't work with human power. Human power works with divine power. That's how that works. Jesus told his disciples to teach or make disciples. <clears throat> that's what he told them to do. Teach. That's what it meant, make disciples. Make followers. I want you to go out and make people f that follow me. All right, I, may ask, I ask you just candidly, do you think this is happening on any significant scale today? Anywhere? Talk to as many missionaries as you want. They all tell you the same thing. This is not happening on any significant scale. It is happening. We give thanks for wherever it happens. We give thanks. But we're say, what I'm saying is, that Jesus is in much in the background. He's not in the forefront of a lot of these activities. He said, teach them not, teach them to everything I commanded you. Teach, teach them what I commanded you. Is that being taught? Is that being taught? There's people that think that that means tell them to be baptized. Well, you should do that. But you command them, but they tell them that they can't be my disciple unless they forsake all. Is that being told? Hmm? Tell them they can't be my disciple if they love anybody more than me. I won't even teach them. I won't even enlist them. Tell them they can't be, this is what he commanded. This is what he commanded. Tell them that unless they pick up their cross every day and follow me, they can't sit in my class. That's what he said, isn't it? Yes. Tell them that they got to seek the first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yeah. Tell them that. Mm -hmm. See, that isn't being told. That's why people aren't doing it. Now, I'm, I'm trying to be as polite as possible, but the reason that isn't happening is that these aren't really done because you can't build a big institution with those kind of words. Yeah, right. uh, but Jesus can. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Jesus can convert an entire city at one time. One preacher, one visit. Amen. That right? Yes. In two days. Two two days. That's right. Amen. Now we see uh, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him. We're going to see another aspect of the kingdom of God. What he sees is see if God is God is giving Nathaniel to Jesus. Yes. See, Jesus said, no man can come to me and say, the Father draws me. He said, all that the Father gives me will come to me. So he's, God is giving Nathaniel to Jesus. Jesus being the Lord, he see, here comes another one. He sees him. Jesus now will assess Nathaniel. Because when you come to Jesus, you get assessed. Examined. <clears throat> Is written, Psalm 44, 21. He knows the secrets of the heart. Uh -huh. 
they, we, we don't know. We don't know what people are thinking. We, we, quite frankly, I'm glad I don't know what people are thinking. I don't know about you, but I think it'd be downright depressing. But he does. Let's hear the Lord testify. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Reins, that's their Bible word for kidneys. See, your spiritual constitution has a sort of a body like your physical body. It has parts. Hearts and kidneys are both very critical. So the person's spiritual makeup, there are some very critical components. The heart's one of them. Heart as being center is what is the, the center of focal point. The kidneys that process, there's a part of your soul that processes uh, a lot of stuff. And the uh, Lord said, I search those things out. I look at them, see what they are written, see how, how they are. It's written, the righteous God trieth the hearts and reins. Jeremiah saw this divine trait. And he said, But, O Lord of hosts, thou judgest righteously and triest the reins and hearts. Now listen, if you're having um, difficulty with somebody, <clears throat> because maybe none of you ever had difficulty with anyone. I, I have had some difficulty with people. So if you're had, this is a good prayer. Say, Lord, you search the hearts and reins. Hey, take a look at this person over here. This uh, enemy of mine. It, I like. I like you to focus your eye on him, and because God's already said He does something about what He sees. That's a really good suggestion, rather than trying to take the matter right. in your own hands. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See the glorified Christ. It's the glorified Christ. Now He said to the seven churches, "I am He that searcheth the reins and the hearts." It's still still going on. And he did, he assessed, he assessed those churches. Mm -hmm. I know that, I don't know how many of the 160 churches in Joplin think regularly about God's checking them out. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Jesus is examining them. I don't know how many of them think that, but I think, I think whoever does know that will set out to shape things up. Yes. Amen. Here's what he said. Now, see, that point I'm making here is that whoever comes to Jesus gets examined. He said to him, I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience. I know it. Again, he said, I know thy works, thy charity, thy service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works. Yeah, these were some of them really doing good. See, God, it's important that people that are doing good know that Jesus sees it and, and approves of it. They need to know. You need to know it. If you're, if you're making progress and you're doing well, you need to know that Jesus sees, sees that. Don't get dis disheartened because maybe some other people don't see it. Jesus sees it. Here's another one. I know thy works. This was said to a church now. I want to emphasize this was said to a church. I know thy works and that thou hast a name that thou livest and are dead. <laughs> you got this name that you're alive. You're dead. Or he said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou art cold or hot. I'm showing that Jesus examines what he looks at, who he looks at, whether it's an individual or a church, he assesses it. I think of that whenever we come together. Oh, Lord, I know you're here. I know you're looking about. Let us all be acceptable. Let my thoughts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, now here comes Jesus. Sees, here comes Nathaniel. Jesus assesses him. He says, to, he says this to Nathaniel, Thou art an Israelite indeed. He knows that a sensitive heart will know what that means, see. Some people would say, what's that mean? Well, those are the guys people he won't say that to. Yeah. What does it mean, a true Israelite? 
Well, some other versions say true or truly an Israelite, true son of Israel, genuine Israelite, genuine Israelite, right Israelite, a real man of Israel. A true Israelite is a member of a body that's within a body. <laughs> there are a lot of Israelites that aren't a true Israelites. In the body, they're Israelites. I mean, they're genuine flesh and blood Israelites, but they're not real Israelites. Paul goes on to say that it, they are not all Israel that are of Israel. This is Romans 9, 6, and 7. They are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Paul confirms this condition. He says, They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. <clears throat> so your children aren't born Christian. Yeah, that's right. yeah. uh -huh. Just in case you didn't know. Wait till about the time there are two, you'll know it for sure. That's right. But the children of promise are counted for the seed. Yeah, amen. So God's taking a tally up. Uh -huh. There's only certain people He counts. He doesn't ask for the church books. Because yeah. there's a true generation, there's a real generation of people that's been around for a long time. Some of them who have come over into the time of Christ, now they've, they've received much more, but there's always been a generation. They're called in Scripture the elect. That's what they're called. So The chosen ones, that's what they're called. You can't account for their existence apart from God. God's what He's the one that called Jesus is what made them what they are. Yeah. Yes. See that, so that's why they're they're peculiar, distinct, not oddballs. That's not what peculiar means. They have faith. That's the kind of the kernel of the thing. And you want to, I think, probably, I think all of you here to do this, but you recognize you recognize people that have faith. And you don't ask them, where do you go to church? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Well, it's not that it's wrong to ask that, you understand, but it's the person's faith. Yes. Maybe that person is going to a lousy church and hates it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't assume because they attend some place that you know is way out in left field. Don't assume that because they're there, they're content. Yeah. That's why I pick up on their faith, and you can polish that up and make them more discontent. Now, there were some very real flesh and blood Israelites Jesus preached to. They were the offspring of Abraham. They really were. And he said to them, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Now, he said that to some real Jews. But they weren't the real Jews, <laughs> real Israelites. Jesus traced it back to Abraham. He said, uh, the people he was talking to that were rejecting him said, we're Abraham's. We belong to Abraham. He said, if you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. See, so there is a spiritual generation that transcends fleshly associations. There are Christian people that are bigger than their environment. In fact, they're Christians in spite of their environment. Well, there's people like this. I, you've met them. I've met them too. You couldn't go around advertising for where they go. You, but see, they're just as discontent about it. They can't find some place. So at least let yourself be made known. Until they find somebody in you. I said, you're a true Israelite. And here's what, here, well, how's this? In whom is no guile. Yeah. Nothing false. You're sincere. 
There's no duplicity in you. You're a man of complete integrity, an honest man, one that can be trusted. You're not, you're not, there's not a false bone in your body, the message Bible says. <laughs> See, that's a trait of someone approved of God. Now, how, now, let me ask you, how would you like Jesus to look you square in the eye? Say, you've got no guile. Hmm? No pretension. You never try and make people think you're something you're not. Now, some of us have trouble with trouble with that. Yeah. Some call it inferiority complex, and they got psychological explanations that I don't accept. But you can have no guile. You yeah. can you can never misrepresent yourself. Mm. If you're dumb, don't present yourself as being smart. Yeah. If you're slow, don't present yourself as being fast. If you're quick to catch on, don't pretend you're like everybody else. He don't. Nathaniel, he had no guile. This is Christ's estimation, not his own. Now, this is a trait of someone approved of God, truly approved of God. They don't misrepresent themselves. See, because once you confront Jesus, once you confront Jesus, really confront Jesus, you find out who you really are. Uh -huh. And you've been so impressed with Christ, you're not going to spend time trying to both yeah. present a good uh -huh. picture of yourself. Uh -huh. Beside that, they know the eyes of the Lord search the heart, so they're not going to get involved in that. You're a true Israelite. No guile in you. Now, some people would think, now, you should never really say that because that might make the person proud. Yeah. Oh, no, I know people to think this way now. Never say, that was very good that you did because that might, you know, uh -huh. that, well, if they did good, tell them it. Yeah, amen. What do you mean? Is that, what do you, if there's no guile in a person, they're going to, they wouldn't say, well, that wasn't me. Well, I tell them, no, it was you. You're the one who did it. You're the one I'm complimenting it. I know that Jesus was behind it, yeah. but you said it. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying it. Yeah. And then you should say, thank you, thank you. Yes. Don't you, I don't. <laughs> All the glory to God. That's a bunch of hogwash. That's what that is. That's pretension. Yeah. Don't be afraid to acknowledge that what you had is from the Lord. Say, praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Nathaniel, now how is he going to respond? That's quite an introduction. That's quite an introduction. Now, he wouldn't have said that to, say, Pilate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or Herod yeah. or the Pharisees or the scribes or the Sadducees. Or the high priest, he wouldn't have said that to them. See, Jesus never lies. Yeah. Yeah. He can whisper to your heart, you've got no guile. Mm -hmm. Don't you shrink back from it if he does. Yeah. Say, thank you, Lord, it's because of you that I have no guile. Yeah. Now, Daniel said unto him, <coughs> Whence knowest thou me? See, he didn't say, no, no that's gone a little bit too far now. Let's, <laughs> I'm, I'm very humble. I don't like to be, it's the Lord. But Nathaniel knew what he was. He knew he wasn't a pretentious man. How did you know me? Jesus said Nathaniel was a real Israelite and no guile was in him. And Nathaniel's answer confirms that the case. That's just how a man with no guile would answer. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't fall under the weight of what the Bible calls voluntary humility. Colossians 2.18, or false humility, but self-abasement. <clears throat> he was responding, it was his response that testified that that really is what he was. The point is that Nathaniel knew what he was. And you must ask yourself the question, do you know what you are? Or are you confused by what you, what you are? It's important to know what you are. He's amazed that anyone has seen him like he really is. 
Now, I know that, that you're the same way. Someone says something about you, and it's right on target, and it surprises you. Whoa. It's amazing. No one's seen that, but see? That's just exactly how Nathan, Nathaniel felt. See, most time people assess you something and they say the wrong thing and you but when someone just says it just exactly like it was, it's it kind of astounds you. If somebody saw it, well that's how the thing it was. He was astounded. Who how did you know that? He's amazed anyone properly assessed him. Jesus said, Well, <laughs> he said, uh, before Philip called you, I I knew you before Philip. What's he saying? <laughs> He's saying before Philip, before I, uh, Philip found you, mm -hmm. I found you. Yeah. I found you first. Before, before, before Philip called, I saw you. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. I know you. So this is the way that we're, we're seeing how the kingdom of God works here. The first contact is made by the Lord Jesus. Yes. He says, I come to seek and to save. Yes. Now some of you, it's a very laborious trying to find yes. the sheep. This is, <laughs> this is, uh, but let Jesus find them and then send you. Yes. Now this is how the kingdom works, and it's spelled out in scriptures. It's been spelled out pretty clearly in Romans 10, 13 through 15. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they've not believed? Okay. And how shall they believe in him whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be <laughs> sent? Yes, amen. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and that bring. Mm -hmm. They were sent, see? Yeah, amen. Now this is how every conversion happens. Jesus finds the person yes. because his eyes are searching. Mm -hmm. He's scanning the whole earth. So he finds the person. Remember, he's beginning to assemble his disciples. To, he's going to enlist them to help him build his church. Mm -hmm. So he's finding them, finds them. First he finds them. Then he selects somebody to send to them. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. You take Cornelius. First he was found. God made the first contact yeah. with an angel. Yeah. He is found. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to do it going further unless he believes. He can't believe unless he hears. So he has someone sent there. So Peter's sent there to deliver the message to the person that has been already found. You can see it. Same happened when they, the Holy Spirit told the church that in Antioch of, of Syria, they were ministering to the Lord. He says, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas and Saul for a work whereunto I have sent them. Uh -huh. Now what had happened was, the Lord had found, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> he'd found some receptive people. Yeah. Now he goes over here and he's going to send somebody mm -hmm. to the ones he's found. And they're, and they're going to be successful. Well, oh, man, they're going to reap. You read about it. Yeah. You read about Acts 13 and on how they, they reaped. They reaped harvest because first they were found. Yeah. Then the messenger was sent. Oh, you'll remember <laughs> one time they tried to go into Asia and God blocked the path. Tried to go in Bithynia. God blocked the path. Then Paul has a dream. Sees a man over in Macedonia. He said, come over in Macedonia and help us. And so they talked it over, and they gathered. God's calling us to mess. That God's calling to mess. All right, the Lord had found somebody over there, a group of women by a riverside. 
the Lord, you got to see this, what I'm telling you here. God found them. And he come back here because they can't believe on him when they heard and they can't hear without a preacher. So he sent somebody over there to minister to the ones he found. So the same was happening in the city of Samaria. The Lord found this entire, this entire city that's ready to be reaped. And Jesus spent two days some time before that. So he sees there's a city ready. Comes back. He found them. Comes back, sends Philip there. He preaches. The whole city believes. Amen. See, they were found. Then Philip was sent. Raped the fields. Here's another matter. There's a man from Ethiopia riding along in a chariot, and the Lord finds him. He's a He's ready to be ready, ready to be reaped. Uh -huh. Go back and sends Philip, join himself. Philip goes there. First time, first encounter. The man's baptized in Christ, goes on his way rejoicing. How how'd all that happen? First they were found, yes. then the messenger was sent. Amen. Amen. Now Paul told the Corinthians that this is the way God worked. Because at Corinth, they began honoring, unduly honoring men. Good, good, godly men, but they were not intended to be honored the way they were honoring them. So here's what he told them, 1 Corinthians 3, 3 through 5. For ye are yet carnal, for as where is there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believed even as the Lord gave yes. to every man? Amen. What do you mean? You Corinthians, mm. I was ready to leave Corinth. Oh. And Jesus told me he found some people there. Mm. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. huh? yes. He said, I have much people in this city. He found them. And he sent Paul to be the messenger. Amen. Think of it this way. The eyes of the Lord are continually scanning the earth, yes. looking for a man whose cause he can undergird. Yes. Looking for him. Yeah. As he's looking, he finds people that are tender, supple. They're ready to be reaped. Yeah. When he finds someone, he sends. Yes. Someone to have I'll tell you now, I personally have experienced this. I was uh, very discouraged. I had preached to a lot of churches and a lot of people, but I just was totally unimpressed with the, res the level of the people and their response. I was. I told the Lord, I don't. I got to be honest with you, Lord. I, I don't want to preach to people like this. I don't see anybody in Scripture that did want to preach to people like this. So could you lead me to somebody that wants the things of God? So we started with this nucleus here. But Christian leaders contacted me. I didn't have any idea who they were. From Pakistan, Burkina Faso, West Africa, Kenya, mm -hmm. and Ghana. Mm -hmm. None of them knew each other. Yeah. All through internet. They all had the same request. Teach our teachers, which is what I'd been saying. That the, the, the teachers in foreign countries are at such an abysmal low level, they're the, they have to be, they can't deliver anything of substance to the people. So we just in, a, in this circle of heaven adding to the baby section. They saw it. And today, we may, I minister to thousands of people. Just in Pakistan alone, it's over half a million. Regular. I could never. What, had, what was that? Jesus found them. Yes, that's right. Amen. Uh -huh. And then 
I'm not the only one. I'm sure someone else was sent. But then he, he found, sent somebody, because how shall they believe on him without heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach as yet to be sent? See, this is how Jesus works. Amen. We used to sing a song when I was young. Lead me to some soul today. It was a, it, we sang, sang it from the heart. Mm -hmm. And I know what it meant. Mm -hmm. But I can sing that with more understanding now. Mm -hmm. Now instead of saying, lead me to somebody that's lost, mm -hmm. yeah. I can say, lead me to somebody that's ripe. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, pray that he'll send forth laborers into the fields where the grains just sprouting is that what he's that is of what he said labors into his harvest harvest and nobody can be harvested until they're ready and only Jesus really knows really knows if they're ready and if you will put yourself at Christ's disposal he'll lead you to people like that and they'll respond to you. And you'll thank God for it. This doesn't mean you should expect resounding success all the time. But I'm saying when, it, this, when this happens, Jesus has found them. And Jesus sends you. You reap the harvest. Jesus said, I saw you. That's how you account for the rapid spread of the gospel in the early, during the early church. 3,000, number came to 5,000, multitudes, men and women. You just, <laughs> why did it grow so exponentially? Was it because of the fervor of the early Christians? Well, there was fervor, all right. No, it was because Jesus found the people and he sent someone to reap the harvest. Jesus said, I saw thee. When you were under the fig tree, remember, you was under the fig tree. Ah, we have no idea about the details of that. But Nathaniel did. Yes, yes. Something significant had happened under that fig tree. He, right. We don't know what it was, uh -huh. but, but Nathaniel, he knew. Uh -huh. Maybe he'd been pondering about what he heard John the Baptist uh -huh. say. Or, uh -huh. But when he said that fig tree, Nathaniel knew nobody would have known. Yes, no one would have known that but me. He'd not shared it apparently with anyone else. Uh -huh. Maybe sometimes you've experienced this. Suddenly, you become aware you just know that God knows this or that about you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, it can either bless you or scare you. Yeah. Yeah. Depends how you've been living. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when that time comes, let me tell you something. God's about ready to do something about it. Yeah. Because when God sees something... He does something about it. So if he sees you and your heart's clean and right, you want to work for the Lord, you want to labor for him, you're honest about it, no guile about it, the Lord just doesn't see that. He's going to put you to work. Yeah. It's going to happen. If it, happened, if it hasn't happened yet, it's going to happen. Yeah. I saw thee. That was not a casual glance, like I was scanning just out of the corner of my eye. No. The word... Translated saw here means to perceive or notice or discern or discover. He, he fixed his eye. He was scanning and he just he stopped. Yeah. Saw Nathaniel. Nathaniel, he, he, he responds. He says, Rabbi, thou art the son of God and the king of Israel. Well, that must have been something's under that fig tree that he... Yeah. He knew that Jesus had precisely pegged who he was, what he was thinking. Rabbi. That word rabbi is a transliteration of the Hebrew word rabbi. Yeah, apparently it was not an appropriate English word. Sometimes it's translated master, master not meaning boss, master being master teacher. That's what they call a teacher. Rabbi accented teacher. Some versions say, sir. It's a living Bible. Now, here, in Jewish culture, a teacher was elevated. 
rabbi. A teacher was elevated in Jewish culture. You got to see this now, because this was a God-developed culture. Okay. Teachers. Uh -huh. now, now, in our country, our fair country, we have athletes, entertainers, business tycoons, religious professionals there. Uh -huh. And a Jewish culture a teacher. That's right. Amen. See the difference? Yes. <laughs> see the difference? Mm -hmm. This is how Jesus was known as he went about. People, began, he's a teacher. He's a teacher. You go hear Jesus, and he taught them. And to, over and over, say, and he taught them. Yes. He taught in the synagogue every, every Sabbath. He taught in the temple every day. Yes. He taught. He was a teacher. Thou art, O rabbi, teacher, thou art the Son of God. Now, when Gabriel <coughs> appeared to Mary, telling her she was going to conceive, he said, he shall be called the Son of God. In fact, this is the very thing Satan challenged when he tempted him. If thou be the Son of God. That was the very thing he challenged. John the Baptist said, I saw and I, I, saw and I bear, bear record. This is the Son of God. See, it was, Martha said to Jesus, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Peter confessed. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. When he walked among men, there were not many, though, that said that. <clears throat> Some people tried to kill him because he said he was the Son of God. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because now he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal to God. Now, the, this is a key thing. Jesus is the Son of God. This is a key fact to be believed. Yeah. Well, this is not like head activity. Yes. <clears throat> As Scripture tells, it, who is he that overcomes the world? Who, who is it? How would, you, how would you identify the person that overcomes the world? John tells you. But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. He, Hmm. So you say, well, what, is it, what, is it, what does that imply? Well, that implies if, you're, if a person is not overcoming the world, they don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. It doesn't make any difference what they say. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever believes Jesus is the Son of God overcomes the world. That's, yeah. So that's how key, that's how key yeah. this is. Here, well, the implications are quite, uh, quite staggering. You remember uh, the eunuch after Philip began to open and began the same scripture and open up Jesus to him. He said, well, here, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Now, some people think that Philip had been preaching that he should be baptized. I don't think so. I think he just preached to him that Jesus was baptized. Because then he preached Christ. You can't preach Christ without telling the people Jesus was baptized. And so the eunuch said, why can't I be? Uh -huh, yeah. Philip says, well, if you believe, you can. Didn't tell him what to believe. No, I didn't tell him. Uh -huh. I'll try and say this gently. <laughs> if you believe, you may. So if, if a Pentecostal had been preaching to him, he'd say, well, I believe if you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the evidence of speaking in tongues. See, yeah. that's, what, that's what they'd say. Uh, if you were a Baptist, they'd say, well, I'm ready to repeat the sinner's prayer. Uh -huh. yeah. What would he say? He didn't tell them what to believe. Uh -huh. He said, if you believe. Now, well, his statement's going to tell you yeah. what Philip was preaching. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I believe uh -huh. that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yeah. See, that's what Philip been preaching to him. Yeah. That's how potent that is. That's how potent that truth is. See, that's just not like a, a, an, an effect that the intellect gets a hold of. That is a reality. Jesus is the Son of God, and if you can get hold of that with both hands, there's nothing you can't do. Amen. You'll overcome the world. You'll do it.
That confession will lead you to have a what must I do attitude. Because if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, if you really, you believe that, you'll be asking, what does Jesus want me to do? And everyone who believed that did what they were told to do. Let's say a person doesn't do what Jesus... Well, Jesus has addressed this subject. And this question needs to be asked. A lot of people, you, you decide who you're going to ask it to, but... Why do you call me Lord... Lord... Two lords. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Now, there's some people need to be asked that. Did you ask because you want an answer? Well, I'd like you to answer this now. I'd like that you to answer this. You say you're a Christian. You say that you He's your Lord. Why aren't you doing what He said? Hmm? That's a good question, isn't it? Church needs to be asking it. I might. It might thin out the ranks, I know that. Yeah. Now, let me read to you what he's followed up, the words he's followed that with. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that hath that without a foundation built an house upon earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. That's the person who said he was Lord, but didn't do what he said. Yes, His life uh -huh. was wasted. Right. He lived in vain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Everything he did ended up pointless. Right. Why? Why? Because he didn't do what Jesus said. Yeah. Boy, that's right down in the trough where people walk, isn't it? Amen. There's such a weakness in the professing church on this that it boggles the mind. It, it's staggering to consider. With rare exceptions, Christ being the Son of God is viewed as a creedal point. It's a creedal point. It's this, we believe this. But Jesus is going to ask, do you really believe that? Then you'll do what I say. Here's a first one for you if you're rich. Sell everything and give it to the poor. Yeah. Does that mean every rich person should sell out? No, that meant that that rich person had to sell out. Right. Yeah. So then you'll have treasure in heaven. See, but notice what happened. Yeah. Which is greater, treasure in heaven or treasure on earth? This man thought treasure on earth. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. See? He, so he didn't do what Jesus said. Right. And Je it was sad to Jesus because Jesus saw some potential in that... Uh, in that man. Now through the resurrection of the dead, God declared Jesus to be the Son of God. Romans 1, 4. By the resurrection of the dead, He declared Him to be the Son of God with power. Uh -huh, yeah. That was declared now by the resurrection. When He come up back out of the grave, He was de openly announced, this is the Son of God with power. Hey, He wasn't powerless before that. Oh, Jesus wasn't powerless before that. Ask any demon, ask anybody, ask any disease, ask any storm, ask any rolling sea, ask any madman. Jesus had power before, but this is a different kind of power. This is a different kind of power. This is the kind of power that brings people to glory. It's a different kind of power. The greater power because it is directed to a greater objective. Yes, Jesus can make you well. There's no question about that. And we want him to do it. But there's a greater power that can get you to heaven. He declared to be the Son of God with power. Jesus said, now whoever denies me, I'll deny him before the Father. I don't want that. Yeah, amen. And he says that whoever denies me, I'll deny him to the angels who are the reapers. Don't get that one. Don't get that one down there. Yeah. They didn't believe that I was the son of God. Yeah. They, they, they go with the terror bundle. Uh -huh. 
That's how it's going to be. That's right. So thou art the Son of God. What a confession this was. Yeah. I know this caused joy to Christ. I, yeah. I know that Jesus was rejoicing in his heart. Yeah. Nathaniel Amen. had seen that. Yeah. He says, Thou art the King of Israel. Yeah. This is the one on whose shoulder the government <laughs> would be placed. Micah, when he, that text in Micah 5, 2 about Bethlehem, out of him the ruler, said, he said, he that will be the ruler of Israel. <laughs> That's what Nathaniel said, you, you're the one. You're the one. It's a ruler of Israel. And uh, Jesus will be known as the king of all the earth, Psalm 47, 7, before it's all over. And Zechariah, who prophesied about him coming into Jerusalem, uh -huh. riding on the colt, the foal of an ass, he said he was going to be the king of Israel. He yeah. said that. Yeah. And when they were shouting the praises, you remember? When they shouted, and they, blessed is the king of Israel that come with the name of the Lord, John 12, 13. Yeah. See, so Nathaniel saw this. Yeah. This is the one to whom the Israel is subject. So Nathaniel saw Jesus differently than the multitudes. Mm -hmm. He associated him with the prophetic proclamations. Amen. See, Jesus not only came to save, but to rule. Yeah, amen. Not only to deliver, but to spoil the foes, mm -hmm. cashing them down. Yeah. But it's King of Israel, but see that Israel's too small. Yeah. Considering considering what Jesus has done, uh -huh. someone said, "If I was the only person, Jesus would die for me." I go home and sit in a kindergarten class. That is a dumb saying. Yeah, right. Nothing in Scripture even hints that that is so. That's right. <laughs> Here's what God said to him. Uh -huh. Now he's talking about Israel, not talking about one person. Yeah. Talk about Israel. Mm -hmm. He said, It is a light thing, some versions say small thing, mm -hmm. that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob mm -hmm. and restore the preserved of Israel. That, that's a uh, son that's too small. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's too small. Mm -hmm. What you've done is worth more than that. Yes. I will also give thee a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation to the end of the earth. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw the bigger part of humanity in on the Amen. side, Amen. the Gentiles. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's the real Son of God. Yes, Amen. That's the real Son of God. And there's, he's had received a lot of bad press from uninformed people that have, yeah. that have shrunk him down. So he's smaller than God presented him. Now I'm going to make a statement here that I believe, I hope it doesn't offend anybody, I'm going to say it anyway. The result of shrinking Jesus down has the net result has been fewer people have embraced him. That's the net result. That's why. That's why people would rather go to Super Bowl because they don't think Christ is significant because he has not been presented yeah. in that manner. But God has presented him in that manner. Amen. He's presented him as a propitiation for the sins of the world and as a son of God with power and as he that's over everything mm -hmm. and nothing is not under his feet. Mm -hmm. He's presented him as a great, as a great person. Amen. And uh, Nathaniel got to meet him. And he end, he's going to end up an apostle. I was saying, he's, he's the Bartholomew of, of the listing. You know, I got a lot out of that. I don't know if you did or not. But Wasn't that good about Jesus finding you? And then <laughs> well, this changes your whole approach to things. He said, you know, he said, he taught people that, the Lord directs your path. He taught, he taught people this. When somebody, they just apply that to daily life. But what about, what about this thing of 
ministering to the name of the Lord. What about the direct in the feet there? Yes, right. All right, I, I, could, I could really yeah. go on for quite a while. Go ahead. So it changes the way you look at people. You start looking, looking for indications that God's found them. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, we'll totally yes, right. uh, now the Lord's in charge of the harvest. Mm -hmm. that's the Lord, right. of, the the Lord so, of the harvest. Yeah, the harvest. So that mm -hmm. uh, now we're uh, that's what, things got kind of messed up. Now we're not in charge of the harvest. That's right. Yeah, he is. He is in charge. The Lord of the harvest. Yeah. I said you can pray for more laborers. Yeah. 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 And generally, the ones that do the praying yeah. get the sin. Yeah. <laughs> the sin the ones that are Amen. sent. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah, I think that understanding Jesus as the Son of God probably deserves some more more probing than we, we oh, typically yes. give it. Mm -hmm. It's something, you know, I've heard that since I was, I can as long as I can remember that yeah. Jesus is the Son of God. It, it's, it sounds like a real simple truth, but yeah. there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. it, it implies, for one thing, it implies that Jesus has a unique relationship to God. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the Son of God. He's the Son of God. Yeah, mm -hmm. He has a unique relationship to God. And He's not inferior to the Father. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that. There are actually cults that teach that Jesus is like an inferior God. or mm -hmm. He's something less than, yeah. than, than God. But, but that's not what that implies at all. The Jews understood that. Remember that one time they yeah. were yeah, stoned him because yeah. yes. he made himself equal. They understood to say Jesus is the Son of God means he he shares the the nature yeah. of the Father. That's, so right. that's the relation. The Father just I, I I have I have certain traits I inherited from my earthly father. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. so to say Jesus is the Son of God, like you're you're saying he's equal yeah. with God that he mm -hmm. he shares the divine nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we moved far beyond now just saying Jesus is just another moral teacher. Oh, yes. He is a teacher, but but he's also the Son of God. Amen. See, and when it's all going to wash out, mm -hmm. is that a person's attitude toward Christ is their attitude toward God. I can see that that's one of the implications of Jesus is the Son of God. Being the Son of God made him accessible to us yes. Yes. but now he's going to let be made known what we really think of God yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Jesus is the one that can show us the Father yes, yes. or teach us about yes, him right. yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah I was mindful of how Christ, he, people have this idea about Jesus and sort of circles like a spiritual guru, mm. sort of stands on his own, had this 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 relationship with God, but he stands sort of all on his own, mm -hmm. and he can be rather subjective to everyone. But Christ sends people, That's and it. part of this knowing who he is mm -hmm. and accepting him as the Son of God is accepting who he sent. Yeah. Today we have people who don't want to, they don't want to uh, listen to the, the Apostle Paul mm -hmm. and various others whom Christ himself sent. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And to then deny who he sent is to deny him as well. Yeah. 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 What, one, of the, a, one of the roles as I see it mm -hmm. is that Jesus being the Son of God means that God can through him communicate to a fallen race. Uh -huh. And then the, through him, the, the race can yes. come to God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, Judah. Nathaniel not being a pretentious man and knowing it about that. You know, Jesus examined Nathaniel and came to a correct conclusion. Nathaniel examined Nathaniel and came to the same, yeah. came to the same conclusion. Yeah. Doesn't that make you want to examine yourself and come to the same conclusion as Christ did, and it be a good one? Yeah. That's a very that's a very good trait in and of itself of Nathaniel to examine himself and come to the same conclusion as Jesus did. Amen. That's a very good thing to do. I think this, Lord Sister Barb. I was thinking about some of the same things about how confirming it is for the Lord to be able to testify to us. 
yeah. of our own yes. person, who, who we are to yeah. us. It's very confirming. But here, the, the bigger confirmation for Nathaniel in seeing the Lord confirming him yes. was that he was able to see Christ. That Christ was confirmed mm -hmm. to Nathaniel that day. That was Amen. the bigger confirmation. Yeah. We, can, we can also see this. When the, when the Lord is able to, to show us and open up to us who we are, confirming that to us, then that's a comfort to us, and we rejoice and we're thankful for that. But we want the bigger confirmation to be turned back to see who He is more that's clearly right. because of that. Think of the think of the final revelation of yourself. The final revelation. Yeah, just to, this is what if you if you're with the Lord. Here's what He'll say: Well done, good and faithful servant. It's going to be his. Now talk about shouting. Yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that because see, you know, when he does the work like that, it doesn't accrue to mm -hmm. the pride. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it makes for humility. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about this under the fig tree thing. You know, <laughs> the Lord obviously had done something, or you know, and and worked something in him. That, that later he would call that to mind, to his mind. Right. But the Lord already knew. He already knew what he had done there. And yet it had to, he, he just reminded him so that he would know, I know. I'm the one that did it. I kind of probably thought that that was some of John the Baptist's fruit, that he must have been meditating on some things that John the Baptist had said. Yeah. Yes, Brother Jason. The prophet said, and the psalm said. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nathaniel, it's good to remember here on Christmas Eve that when uh, Nathaniel recognized Jesus is the King. Yeah. Yeah. When Matthew and Luke both, when when the birth of Christ was announced, he was introduced as the King. That's the king, right. Yeah. From the time he was born. Uh -huh. That's right. So it's, this, this, it's That's something right. he is. He is the King of Israel. He was yeah. that from the moment that he came into the world. Amen. He came in as the King. He's going to come back as the King. Yeah. He left this world and, and went into heaven to be enthroned at mm -hmm. God's right hand. Yeah. The implications of that are earth shattering. Yes. Yes. That Jesus is the king. Amen. He was set for the fall and the yes. rising of many in Israel. Yeah. yeah. The thoughts of many hearts be revealed. Yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. he didn't only yeah, well, that's some afraid he we're gonna deal with. But Jesus didn't only come to save. That's right. Yeah, that's hmm? right. He came to save, but that, that's not all he came yeah. to do. I know this is just me thinking, but I thought that maybe Nathaniel had had something personal, a personal time there under the fig tree that only God knew about. You know? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. so, oh yeah. When, I think you're when right. the Lord referred to it, he was like, he knew. He knew no one else knew. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't have made such a right. such an assertion as he made. So it had to be yes. quite a revelation <laughs> that he wouldn't have told anybody. Yeah, yeah, sister. I was thinking about this well done, now good and faithful servant. Mm. And I was thinking about when, um, on Judgment Day, when the Lord says, when God's, the Father says that to the Son, mm -hmm. and how, like, Jesus found us, but then he, he already knew then that that was going to be what was said. You got to present us, yeah. Yeah, so he already knew, and he knows what we, we, are, what we will be mm -hmm. in He's that time. He's going to present us to God. Says, yeah. Behold, I am the children that thou hast given me. So we don't get a lot of insight into what's going to happen, but it's going to be big, pretty yes. big. <laughs> he's not yet. Yeah, he's going to receive the ultimate. Well done, well done. You brought them all home clean and safe. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Awesome. I see too that the tenderness in the Lord with with Nathaniel here that that, that the Lord knew Nathaniel before he yes, before he was even. Born, he knew, yeah. but he knew Nathaniel wouldn't be able to, to handle that truth yet. Yeah. But he knew the truth that he would be able to handle. Yeah, that's right. And so uh -huh. he gave him just what he needed to know in yes. order to receive him as the king. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, you can conclude from that that everybody has something Jesus can work with. Yes, that's right. Yes. Amen. There's something. Yes. Yes, Brother Justin. Some, some people that Jesus would say that to and they wouldn't believe them, even though they knew, they would know inside 
that, the, that what he's saying is the truth. There's some people that they're convicted, and they know that the conviction that they're being convicted with is, they know they're doing the wrong thing, and they know that they, they instinctively know they're being convicted that they're doing the wrong thing, but they choose not to. Uh -huh. to no, believe. they're doing the wrong thing. Jesus won't say, yeah. I, no guile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus will never commend a person who's in the act of doing wrong. It, no, it, this won't happen. Yeah. He didn't commend Saul of Tarsus, you know. He was in the act. He says, you're going to have to go in the city and someone will tell you what to do there. Yeah. Yes. Um, Nathaniel, under the fig tree, how we just talked about this confirmation thing. I was considering also this is this was done before mm -hmm. when the woman with the issue of blood came <laughs> and she touched Jesus and he said he perceived virtue had gone yeah. in. Yeah. And so he made a point to um, say who touched me, mm -hmm. and it, it caused this woman to come and come yeah. and tell him. Said she told him all the truth. Yes. Yeah. Even though no one knew. Yeah. Well, Jesus it. knew. But it mm -hmm. was it was his, um, this is him being tender because this confirmation is critical for us. Yes. Because it, it when, she, when she came to him, she, remember it says she felt within herself. She yeah. was healed. Yeah. Yeah. But when she came to him, he told her daughter. He daughter, she, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in mm -hmm. peace. So yes. she received more after that confirmation. Yeah. Amen. 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 I appreciate when you look at the Gospels and you see the way that, that Christ lived his life and the things that he did, the, the, the doctrine fleshed out. Mm -hmm. See, is that we're not just talking about an idea or a theory or something like that, but the, yeah. the things that the apostles would teach later about this very subject, about the way that people come to Christ and, and what the, the calling that God does, you can see in this example it lived out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this record for Brother Nathaniel. We see much of ourselves in him. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll have the discernment to trace back the cause of our salvation to Jesus finding us and sending someone to us. We thank thee for the care that that manifests in showing us that Jesus is indeed the Good Shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen.